to the trailblazer common and started a synagogue, an Orthodox synagogue in Buffalo, New York, Young Israel Greater Buffalo, which still exists today. And I remember <coughs> that we went, Esther and I went with our small children then to visit Talmud and Rivka in Buffalo. We went to Niagara Falls, it was beautiful. Um, but what I remember, and I can't believe, because I was just thinking about it today, and I remember exactly, because I went with Kalman when he gave his downtown class, in, to, a homage class, downtown, to, to professionals. And, I mean, and he spoke in the shul shop this morning. And he spoke in the shul mincatah. And I can't believe that, that so many years later, I remember, it's not my memory, it's the impact. I remember what he said at the Bumish class, I remember what he said when he spoke Shabbos morning, and I remember what he spoke, what he said when he spoke Shabbos Mincha. At the Bumish class in the middle of the week, he spoke about the image of God, and he spoke about the, how every single human being has potential and is created in the image of God. Shabbos morning, he spoke about love for every Jew and our responsibility to average and to teach. Shabbat afternoon, he spoke about the love that God has for each and every one of us. The, this was the trademark. These were trademarks of our Rebbe. These were trademarks of our teacher. And I saw in Buffalo that all the dreams and all the talk about in the yeshiva started to come, and I saw it becoming real. I saw it becoming the law. Thomas taught me how to buy books. He said it's worthwhile to buy books because if you get one speech out of a whole book, the whole thing is worth it. And he showed me, also directed me, which books to buy, which books would be good on Rashi, which books would, would be the kind of material that we were used to in our yeshiva. He had a knack. And the bookstores all over the country know about Calvin Winter. They waited for him to come. When I first came to Tucson, one or two people in this room may recall that it was not an easy ride. There was some really, really rough going in the very first year. And I was on the phone one time. It was a rough night the night before with interaction, in fact, probably the, one of the hardest times I ever had in my whole career, whole existence. And I was talking to Calvin on the phone, and he said, Rifka wants to talk to you. My sister-in-law, Rifka, gets on the phone, she said, he's right out, I think you should talk to my father. Her father, Rifka's father, was the late great giant in his youth. So Rivka, what she did was she gave me her father. She shared her parents with me and with Esther. Ava became totally involved, totally immersed in everything we were doing in Tucson. We came totally involved and totally immersed in the lives of my children. It was like a, an, an additional grandfather to my children. There was no problem. Rivka had no problem sharing her parents with us. I remember connection, connection to family was so, so important to come. After our daughter Hannah kind of was born, um, Esther took sick, and uh, it was a Friday, and late Friday night, there, Tom and Rivka show up. I don't know if you remember. I remember very well. They were there for us. And when Esther got sick 10 years ago, he came on a plane right away. Tom and Rivka were here. That's the picture. You see the picture? If you see the, pic the picture on the, uh, on the card and on the email where Esther and I are standing with Kalman and Rivka, 
That was that was ten years ago when they came to uh, to help us to give us strength and, and to literally help us out after after those days. He had come and had amazing keep it up a hand, honor for his parents, his mother, for his father. There's such a thing in, in that we believe, we believe that there's a holy, that a holy person, there's such a thing as a holy place. A holy place. A synagogue is a holy place. Uh, every place in God's world is holy. But a synagogue has more sanctity. It's a holy place. There's a concentration of holiness. Every place in the world is holy. Israel is holier. Israel is holy, but Jerusalem is a holier place than the rest of Israel. Jerusalem is holy, but the Temple Mount is holier. So there's such in Judaism, we believe there's such a thing as holiness of things. After my father-in-law took ill, fell down a flight of stairs, and he decided to sell the house. Common and Rivka were the ones who were there at the house. Take care of the things, emptying, moving, and everything was out of the house. Everything was out of the house. Tom went to the spot where my mother-in-law, blessed memory, lit candles for 40 years. 40 years plus, he died there. When I got married, I know I was it was amazing when I noticed, when I saw that Kalman studied with my father-in-law every night. They studied Mishnah. And this went on. So this went on as I don't know when it started before, but I know for sure it went on for 35 years. And they studied every night. And even when Talmud at times when he was in Israel, they worked out and they coordinated. This was Talmud's love for Torah study and also Talmud's love for his father. In this week's portion, or last week's portion, Jacob received the blessing from his father Isaac. Isaac announces that I'm going to die. I'm going to die. So let me go ahead and bless you. I need to bless my son because I'm going to die. Hurry up. Let's get rolling. And then you know the story. You read the story of there was, was Esau and then Yaakov came in. He dressed like Esau and he received the blessing and this was divinely ordained. But the Chavis Chaim says, What's going on? Isaac says, I'm going to die. He lived more than 50 years after that. So what does it mean when he said, I'm going to die? So the Chavis Chaim says, that's how Isaac lived his life. He lived his life that every single day was the most important day in his life. Because sometime I'm going to die. And I don't know when. So every day has to be special. This was Talmud. And it wasn't only when he was sick. This was Talmud 35 years ago. This was Talmud 40 years ago. This was Talmud 50 years ago. I remember. I remember I was talking on the phone. I was in Tucson already. And I'm talking on the phone to Talmud. And he says to me, you know, every morning you say, Elokim is Shoma Shenasatabi. The soul that you have given to me, the soul that you have just injected in me, the soul is pure. So he said to the Israel, he said, we have one soul. We've got to make the best of it. This prayer says, we have one soul, and now it's mine, but one day, now I have it, it's, it's in me, and one day you're going to take it. One soul, make the best of it. This is how Kalman lived his life. Every day was special. And he, he made his business 
to make every single day of his life extraordinary. During the Shiva, for my mother-in-law, a blessed memory, the family was broken, pain, the pain was humongous, and the Russian Shiva already came. She came to the house. And she spoke far more, spoke Italian. And afterwards, Colin goes over to Esther. And he says, now let me tell you what the Rashiva said. And Colin is elated. He said, the Rashiva said that mommy is in a better place. Now mommy can pray for us. She's in a better place. She can pray for us. So Esther says to Colin, okay, let's go. What are we waiting for? It's a better place. Let's dive in to get there. So Colin says, no, Esther. We're here. We have work to do. That was common. We have more to do. He lived and breathed being a servant of God. They were American boys. They were American boys because one of the boys, who's a close friend of mine, somewhere in between the age, my age and Calvin's age, he told me that every day during lunch, Calvin was quarterback. And uh, his, his fellow told me that when his parents were coming to Israel, they asked him, what do you want? And he said, I need a new football. And they couldn't believe it. The guy, they're going to, you're going to Yeshiva, why do you need a football? But every day, that's it. He and Kalman and two brothers, every day they went out to play football. But being Americans, they connected to the Yeshiva. They connected greatly to the Yeshiva. Kalman became one of the Yeshiva's greatest students. Kalman was not only, not only emulated, he was master, he became a master of the Rosh Hashiva's teaching. And Rosh Hashiva had discussions with Kalman differently than he had with anyone else. And there were intimate, very close moments that Kalman had with the Rosh Hashiva that no one else had. We were sitting in an apartment in New York a year ago. And Talman is undergoing treatment. And he told us about a conversation that he had with the Rosh He says, Talman, let me tell you something. The script of my life did not work out the way I planned. There were so many things that I, if you asked me, I would have said, I wish it didn't happen. Shiva lost his father at a young age. Shiva was an only child. Shiva was ill and at the brink of death many times in his life. Shashiva and the Revitin were not left with children. Shashiva struggled to build his yeshiva for more than for 25 years before it became, and even then, when I came to the time in Shiva, I was number 40. 40. Now there's 400 in the main branch, maybe even 500 thousands of graduates all over the country. Rashida said to Tom, I, 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 I didn't ask for this, but I wouldn't give it up. These are my medals. These are my medals. These are challenges that Hashem gave me, and I have earned my merits. How he said to him, this is my challenge. My sister said the most amazing thing. She told me that she and Colin were talking and she said, 
Okay, she's dead. We wanted to build Torah. We chose. That's what we chose. We wanted to go to Buffalo. We chose. We went to Buffalo. We wanted to go to Silver Springs. We chose to go to Silver Springs. 